Hello. Um, so this video is about the chapter 12, international bond market. So um, this is next to the chapter 11, which is uh, about the international money market securities. Now this chapter continues coverage of international capital market with a discussion of a structure of international bond market. So there are two types of the international bonds. One is foreign bonds and the other is the euro bonds. So we'll see one by one. So what is the foreign bonds? So foreign bond is the one offered by a foreign borrowers to the investor in a national capital market and denominated in the, that nation's currency. So example is if the German firm issued a US dollar denominated bonds in the United States to the US investor, that is the foreign bonds in the United States. If the US firm issue a Euro denominated bonds in any European country, Eurozone country, such as the Germany, and to German investor, that is foreign bond in Germany. So foreign bonds has the unique name, especially for the major currencies, such as Yankee bond is dollar denominated foreign bonds sold in the United States. Samurai bond is yen denominated bonds in Japan. Bulldog bonds is the pound sterling denominated, so UK pounds, denominated bonds to the UK investor sold in the United Kingdom. So that is called a foreign bonds. But you can also finance dollar, not just in the United States, but also in other country. So that case is called the Euro bonds. So Euro bond is the bond denominated in the particular currency, but sold to investor in national capital market other than the country that issued the denominating currency. So such as the, well, if Dutch investor want to borrow US dollar, but not in the United States, but in the United Kingdom, that is a Euro dollar, Euro bonds. So Euro bonds are known by the currency in which they are denominated. So like US dollar Euro bond, yen Euro bond, Swiss franc Euro bonds, we can call it usually Euro dollar bonds, Euro N bonds, Euro Swiss franc bonds. So Euro bonds is going to be issued in other country than the de denominated currency. So if the U US firm want to finance the euro, but not in Europe, but in the United States, that's the euro, euro bonds, euro, euro. So the market for the foreign bonds and the euro bond operate in parallel with the domestic national bond markets. So there are three markets broadly. And all three market groups compete with one another. So they compete each other. In any given year, so in any years, roughly about 80% of the new international bonds are Euro bonds rather than foreign bonds. Okay, so Euro bond market is larger than the foreign bond market. Then we can also categorize these bonds based on the requirement uh, that the regulator uh, 
make. Right. So the barrel bones are the bones with no registered owner. It's anonymous bones. Registered bones are the bones where the owner's name is registered with the issuer. So why people buy barrel bonds? Barrel bonds are attractive to investors desiring some privacy and anonymity, most cases because of tax evasion, which is not very good intention. And it is actually very harmful to the US IRS system. So US security laws require Yankee bonds, which is the foreign bond in the United States, should be sold and the two US citizens basically have to be registered. So a US investor who buy foreign bond, Yankee bond in the US cannot buy bearer bonds. Because bearer bonds have some uh, benefits, usually investors accept a lower yield. So bearer bonds give the lower yield than registered bonds usually. So foreign bonds also have to meet the security regulations of the country where they are issued. This means that the Yankee bond must meet the requirements of the SEC regulations, just like the United States domestic bonds, based on the US Security Act of 1933 and 1934, especially according to the 1933 Act, the security sold in the United States to public investor must be registered with SEC, as I said in the previous slide. And the prospect of disclosing detailed financial information about the issuer must be provided and made available to prospective investors. So which is exactly the same requirement as domestic bond issuer has. So the expense of this registration process, the time delay it creates in bringing a new issue to the market, is kind of additional we have to wait because of the registration, and the disclosure of information These type of the, the difficulties basically make many borrowers prefer to raise US dollars in Euro bond market, not in the United States, in the United States. The Euro bond market, Euro dollar bond market, especially, the short length of time in bringing dollars, you know, to the market, Lower interest rate actually, the borrower pay for euro dollar bond financing in comparison to Yankee bond financing, so foreign bond in the United States, a two major reason why the euro bond segment of the international bond market is roughly four times the size of the foreign bond segment. So it's a lot larger, a lot larger, much larger than the foreign bond market. and how to hold the taxes. Before 1984, US require a 30% withholding tax on interest paid to the non-residents who held the US government or US corporate bond. Okay. And this law was repealed in 1984 and this repeal led to the substantial shift in the relative on the US government and the Euro dollar bonds. So prior to 1984, the top quality Euro dollar bonds of overseas traded at lower yield than the US treasury bond of similar maturity that are subject to the resulting taxes, right? Afterward, the situation was reversed actually because of the this repeal, the foreign investors found the safety of the registered US T-bonds. So US T-bonds is registered and it's safer, right? 
without the withholding tax more attractive than high yields on corporate euro dollar bond issues. So this repeal shift in the relative yield on the US government and euro dollar bonds. So how to register it? Uh, when it's actually same as the domestic bond too. So when bond is issued, this should be registered uh, in SEC, but you don't have to uh, register bond by bond. So it's called the shelf registration. It basically allows the issuer to pre-register the security issues and then offer the securities when the financing is actually needed, which means that you don't have to register one by one. You can register just total, like the pre-registering, obviously have to be a mature company. There must have some precondition, but you can, the issuer can register, company can pre-register the bonds and then they actually issue when they need. So that bond issuance is easier. So SEC rule 144A allows the qualified institutional investors trade also private placements. So it's about price, private placement. These issues that do not have to meet the strict information disclosure requirement because it's not publicly traded. So in this case, the institutional investor can trade privately placed private bonds that also make the bond market easier to trade. So there's also called a global bonds. The global bonds is the very large international bonds offering by single borrower. So one company buy the, the borrower money, but issued in many market globally. It's actual uh, global bond issues were first offered in 1989. So if the company is pretty large, like multinational corporations, they actually can raise dollars, not just in the US, but also as a Euro, Euro like the dollars. So global bond denominated in the US dollars are issued by US corporation, trade as Euro bond overseas, right? And domestic bond in the United States. So you can borrow like in Europe, in Asia, you know, in many other countries, many, like in many multiple markets. So that is called a global bond and it's, it started from 1989. Next part, we will see the type of instruments of the international bond market. 